Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're having a good day. It feels like it's been a long time since I last recorded a video for you. It has been mere days for you, but it's actually been over a week for me because I was away for my Christmas break and I have, <laughs> I have not, I, I wouldn't say I'd missed this world because I've actually been working on a little bit of stuff. Uh, while I was on holiday, I took the world with me on my laptop and ended up doing a little bit more work around here. Nothing huge, nothing that I wanted to show you guys on camera, just a little bit of extra work over there, which we'll get to in a second. But, oh my word, it has been a while since I've recorded, so I apologize if this one is going to be a little bit rusty, but I'm sure we will get back into the swing of things. It always feels like you're taking a massive break when you just step away for a few days when it comes to this YouTube recording stuff. But anyway, here we are, back in the wonderful surroundings of our wheat field, and I I plan on doing a little bit of work today on our melon and pumpkin farms, which I demonstrated the designs for in the previous episode about cactus farming. If you guys haven't checked those out, then you can check out the, the last sort of few minutes of the video is dedicated to melon and pumpkin farm designs. But I figure we will go ahead and set up the main melon and pumpkin farms for today. So I've got a shulker box in my inventory full of all of the stuff we all need to do that, although inevitably I've forgotten something, so I imagine we'll come back for that later. And I also don't have the stuff to decorate it. Speaking of decorating, Let's take a look at what's been going on around here because this is the majority of what I've been working on off camera during my uh, my Christmas break. I was just noodling away on the laptop whenever I had a spare five minutes constructing the rest of this wall. I figured out a staircase that's going to go up to that section over there. We're going to have still have a bridge that comes over from here, but I thought it would be nice to access this little, I don't know, I'm not sure what to call this, a wharf area, the riverside area, I suppose, and uh, the little kind of shipping containers, crates and stuff that we've got packed up over there. By the way, if you were... Uh playing over Christmas time like me, you might have noticed the fact that the chests actually change texture during the Christmas season. There's like three days or two, two or three days at least. I think it's either like Christmas Eve, Christmas Day and the 26th or like the that, that sort of period basically. Chests will actually change so they look like presents. And that was a bit of a shock to the system for me, and I realized that I did not include it at all in the videos that were coming out on the 25th and 26th, because I had completely forgotten that that was a thing, because I guess last Christmas I didn't play a whole lot of Minecraft around those days. But anyway, if uh, if you notice that, do not adjust your texture packs. That is just a, a little Easter egg that Mojang likes to put in there around this time of year. So... You can actually do that, by the way. Speaking of that, while, we, while we're on the subject, you can set that anytime by changing your computer's date to the 25th of December, you'll get <laughs> you'll get those chests because it just does it by like whatever your computer clock is rather than them issuing a texture pack update at this time of year or anything like that. So as you can see, we've got a little uh, staircase coming up here and I was starting to work on this little area. I decided what I want to do is keep the majority of this mountain here, but I started to work on a kind of terraforming project where imagine that like an earthquake has hit this cave or maybe even people have started mining it out and the inside of the mountain, the core of the mountain, is all made of granite. Because I don't tend to use granite for much else, but I don't want to completely neglect it as a block. So I decided to put a little bit of granite sort of embedded in the cave here and start to work on some fairly basic terraforming just to kind of get this looking like it's there's overhangs and stone is kind of like crumbling away to reveal this granite core, this sort of ex interior exterior kind of contrast. It, it's fun so far. I think I will probably push it back a little bit though, if only because it is intruding on the airspace of my staircase down here. And so I might need to do a little bit more terraforming to make sure that, yeah, it's it's not uh, completely overhanging this section. So if I take these blocks out, then it's not going to kind of contrast with what we've got out there. And I, I want to raise the roof, I guess, of this of this place, if you'll forgive me the phrase. So yeah, today we're going to work on melon and pumpkin farms. I'm going to sleep in just a second so we have a little bit of daylight to work with. But I figure, once again, we will set this up over here with our little industrial farming area and we'll put them somewhere around here. Now, I do want to take down this building guide, this kind of block palette that we've put together because, as some people have mentioned in the comments, it is just kind of in the way right now. So I think we will get rid of that first before we do anything else and then we can pack this all into 
into a chest because we know more or less what materials we're working with. This was just a guide for you guys to let you guys know what we're what we're doing here. And feel free, by the way, to deviate from this block palette, especially when it comes to interiors. For example, like the interior in here, we're using uh, dark oak and birch planks, which don't appear anywhere in this palette. That's um, an, an interior can look completely different to an exterior because when you're walking around, you know, looking at the outsides of buildings, you're going to notice things which are vastly different. Whereas if you go into the interior, then the interior is all you're going to see. Hello, I spotted you. <laughs> Get out of here, Mr. Creeper. Don't want you lurking around my sugarcane farm. Occasionally, they will spawn during the night and uh, wander into the sugarcane farm. Even though there are torches in there lighting it up, it actually becomes a little bit dangerous in there during the day. So I might need to put some fence gates or doors in or something like that. But anyway, like I said, let's take down this build palette and then let's get on with making our melon and pumpkin farms. There we go, that's all stashed away in a chest, and uh, I'll keep it in there just in case I need to refresh my memory at any point. I'm going to keep the bed out here for now because this is the place we're going to be working, and we might need to use that to sleep at some point. So I think we're going to clear away some more of this gravel, and... <laughs> I'm running out of places to store gravel at this stage. It's becoming a bit of a nuisance, but I don't want to throw any of it away because we're silk touching all of this so we can use it for future projects, whether that's concrete or coarse dirt or any of the other stuff that you can craft together with gravel. In fact, I think that's kind of the only things you can craft together with gravel. But anyway, we're going to strip off this first few layers here. We're probably going to lay in some dirt or something like that, but that will at least give us a chance to lay in a floor. And my life, this sounds like there are a few zombies around here. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> I've stumbled upon a cave full of zombies. Well, I, I have done a little bit of quick terraforming to, uh, to you know, section this place off from the, the upper level, do a bit of uh, grass laying and stuff, so it may be that they just spawn naturally down here in this cave rather than being, I don't know, from a spawner or something like that. But yeah, it seems like we've caused a bit of a cave-in on that front again. Oh dear. <laughs> and there's another one behind here holding a piece of gravel. I want that back. Give me that back, sir. So after stripping out a little bit of the gravel and <laughs> exposing a fairly hefty cave system in the process, I think it's probably time to grab a little bit of dirt and do some quick terraforming to this area just to make it look a little bit more uniform and to section off this cave that we've discovered down there. Luckily for me, I've got tons of the stuff because I've done a fair amount of landscape shifting since we started this world, so I have basically a double chest full of dirt back at the house, and not to mention a few blocks of grass. Now I've got silk touch on my shovel, so this should be relatively straightforward. We should be able to fill this entire thing up, at least at this level where we're not going to interfere with the cave system too much, and we can harvest the rest of this gravel at a later date. But for now, I think we'll just start to blend this in with the landscape a little more. So with that taken care of, a relatively clear area and a bit of grass mixed in there to help it spread back over. We're going to open up this shulker box and take a look at the supplies we have for this farm. So as we saw in the last episode, we've got observers and pistons to detect when a pumpkin or melon grows and then break it. We've got the pumpkin and melon seeds in here, an example pumpkin apparently, uh, and some water and hoppers for a collection mechanism. We'll also need a few building blocks for just building up the farm itself. We need some dirt so that we can plant some stuff on. Thankfully, we have a whole bunch of that now, and we'll need the hoe so we can plant some stuff. Chests for collection. I think the trapdoors may just be in here because I had them on me or something. I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, we need to set up a collection mechanism first, I think. And maybe we'll do two separate farms, one for pumpkins and one for melons, considering that we've got a a couple of different blocks we can work with here. So let's put the terracotta down first. And the terracotta is maybe not going to be as visible from the outside. I want to decorate the exterior of this as well. So we're going to have a row of grass like this, and we're going to have farmland kind of split intermittently like so, so that a pumpkin or melon could grow to either side. Now let's grab the seeds. Let's start with the pumpkins. We may as well. And we'll need a little bit of bone meal to grow these in just a second, but we're going to use the observers to detect whether or not the pumpkin stalk changes state, like so. And having those all looking at the pumpkin stuff, they'll activate a little bit as this grows up, but in the meantime, it shouldn't be a problem. Now we'll need pistons in between each of these, and we could put water sources underneath some of these observers to help hydrate the farmland, but I have not seen any conclusive evidence about whether or not that makes any difference to the farm itself. I don't think there's anything on Wikipedia about whether or not the pumpkins will actually grow faster if there is water nearby. So if anybody knows anything about that, do let me know in the comments. But for now, we're going to alternate blocks like so, so that the block next to the observer, the block behind the observer gets power when 
the stalk grows and if we dot some redstone in between those like so if we put the yeah we'll need another terracotta block there and we'll pop redstone dust on these like so oh not that one we just want it alternating every every down block like so is going to get a uh is going to get a dot of redstone dust. So that's used up, yeah, a decent amount of the terracotta, not a huge amount though. And we're going to have some water streams flowing in between here that are going to direct everything into two hoppers at the end, which are going to be facing into a double chest ready to collect all the goodies. We're going to do two farms facing into each other like so. And the main reason for that is because it only needs one water stream. So if we put a water bucket at the end here and there, that's still flowing water. It's not formed any kind of permanent water sources. So any item caught in this water stream are going to flow straight down into those hoppers and the contents are going to end up in the chest. Perfect. We can plant the pumpkins on the opposite side and you know what, the uh, water there is probably going to hydrate this farmland so we don't need to worry about water sources under there at all. Not sure quite what I was thinking there but maybe I was thinking that the water streams weren't necessarily going to be on a level with the farmland itself and that will certainly be true of the upper levels of this farm because this is a farm we can build up basically as high as we want to as long as you leave like I said in the previous episode, one block gap above the pumpkin stem. I'm trying to place a block above the pumpkin stem and it's not going very well. There, like that, yes. No, we, we, you can't build there because that pumpkin stem actually needs one block above it in order to grow a pumpkin to either side. So what you're doing there is blocking it from growing in the first place and the farm will basically be inert. It's not going to do anything. I'm putting these barriers at the end because sometimes when a pumpkin gets pushed off by the piston here, it might try and fling itself to the left and we don't want it to go past this point. And occasionally, as I said, this is not a lossless farm design, so you will get uh, you'll get some pumpkins falling onto the grass or onto the farmland where they're not going to get pushed at all. But hopefully that shouldn't be a problem. Hopefully they should, uh, for the most part, go into the water and we're not going to actually lose a huge amount by doing that. They should all get pushed in this sort of direction into the... Oh, there we go. Some of the, uh, the pumpkin stems have already started growing. We're going to hear a little bit of noise from that in the meantime. So the next row of grass and farmland that we can put up is going to be on here like so. So about that far along and we'll do the same with the terracotta so that we can place all of our redstone components on there and this is going to be about enough supplies unfortunately i haven't brought enough terracotta for a huge farm right now so it may mean a trip out to the mesa or something like that if we want to continue building with terracotta but for now i think this will do this will be a decent sort of size there we go that is the top layer up here done and we could add one more layer to this but i am definitely running out of terracotta i have one block left and i went back to the chest to get the rest of what i had but i really didn't bring a huge amount over from the mesa however there is a place that we can go to get terracotta without having to visit a mesa at all and it's actually very close by in fact if we hop down into this river you'll find that there is clay on the bottom here and clay blocks like these in fact in fact if you <laughs> harvest them with a silk touch shovel you don't even have to worry about crafting clay balls back into blocks but the clay balls you can craft in a two by two like so to get clay blocks again if you don't have a silk touch shovel these blocks of clay can be smelted directly into terracotta that's how you actually get clay, and it was called hardened clay for the longest time in the game, but now it is called terracotta. Even so, you can make it out of the clay that you'll find in riverbeds, in lake beds, in swamps, and oceans, and places like that. So if you're out of terracotta and you don't have a mesa nearby, if it's a bit of a pain to get to, or if you just haven't found one yet, don't worry, because you can still pick up some clay from these riverbeds and turn it into terracotta. Now, is that the best use of that clay? That is debatable, because some people prefer to keep clay itself because it can be turned directly into bricks once you smelt it into brick uh, from the clay balls. And the thing about terracotta is that it is available in large quantities in a mesa if you can be bothered to go out to a mesa and find it. So that's why a lot of people will try and find a mesa quite early if they want to build with this stuff because smelting it all out of clay takes a little bit of time and is a waste of a resource that could be used for other things. But in our case, we're going to smelt up the rest of this clay and I'm going to use it for terracotta for the time being because I didn't establish a nether portal headed out to the mesa. So <laughs> I think I need to take a bit of a trip using my elytra if I want to go back there again 
again in a hurry. But in the meantime, I can bring some bone meal over and we can go through the pretty noisy process of growing these stalks back up to full height. And then they should be able to start producing pumpkins, which will get knocked down there. Now I have basically run out of terracotta once again, and I'll probably want to fill this end section up. So let's actually make some dark oak logs into planks and fill that up like so. Oh, there you go. You can see the, uh, the problems with this system. It's not entirely lossless and that pumpkin is just gonna drift there. But seeing as I'm around, I may as well drop down here and pick it up, pop it in the chest with that other one. And these stems down here are actually gonna start producing pumpkins now. So that's gonna be hopefully running in the background while we, uh, while we work here. In fact, putting logs in here has meant that I can probably reclaim a little bit more of this terracotta should we need it. And I'm gonna replace these dark oak planks with trap doors here at the back, which will allow us to see into the farm from the outside whilst also still providing a solid wall that the pumpkins won't be able to hop over. So those trap doors came in handy after all. To prevent the pumpkins from occasionally popping out on top of the pistons or observers, we're going to pop a line of dark oak logs in there as well, just to cut that section off. And yeah, I think that's going to add to the aesthetics of the farm as well. It's going to be nice to have these big old logs kind of in this H shape. So that's a pumpkin farm pretty much sorted out. And it's already produced seven pumpkins while we've been working on this. So that's actually not too bad. Now let's move on to the melon farm, which is going to be exactly the same design at this stage. So we can more or less mirror what we've got here. I'll space things a block apart from the pumpkins over here. Oh, <laughs> that one I do want to replace with a terracotta now that we've got it. But yeah, like I was saying, we're just gonna space everything one block apart from the farm next to it so that we can build these both into the same structure if we want to. And in the end, they're actually going to look quite neat stacked next to each other like this. And now we've got the template for our farm figured out. It is nice and easy to go through and quickly place all of these components. And that's the, the joy of building stuff in Redstone is that it starts off feeling kind of tricky and like you don't know what you're doing, but after a while, some of this stuff becomes second nature and you can put together something like a pumpkin or melon farm without too much fuss. One small thing to add to this pumpkin farm actually before we move any further, it's probably a good idea to light up the interior on these spare blocks occasionally. Remember, I don't think torches will count necessarily, but it's probably not a good idea to place anything above the pumpkin stems. However, the pumpkin spawning spot on either side is fair game. You can put a torch above that. Just don't put a torch on the block, otherwise the pumpkins won't grow there. But <laughs> they'll also be pushed off by the piston when they activate. But yeah, lighting up the farm is a good idea just so monsters don't spawn on any of this grass so that it's nice and secure and you don't end up with weird mob drops in your farm or mobs picking up pumpkins in the middle of here and causing you uh, extra problems. <laughs> you want to eliminate any opportunities for extra problems, ideally, wherever you can. So there we are. With the exception of a couple of melon stalks still needing to be bone mealed over here, we have ourselves two perfectly functional melon and pumpkin farms. And even though these are relatively speaking quite small, we've got 16 stalks for each one. They're going to be producing stuff constantly, much like our sugarcane farm and our cactus farm. So in the end, we're probably going to end up with quite a bit of stuff. Now, one thing that it's worth noting at this point is that pumpkins, when they break, drop one pumpkin and you get the entire pumpkin, whereas melons grow into a fruit that gets broken down into multiple melon slices. So even though we built this melon farm second, and it is still not entirely complete, the two stalks over there still haven't grown, we already have as many, if not more, melon slices than we have pumpkins, just from what's growing here now. So the, the thing about the storage for the melon farm is that you'll either have to visit it like three or four times more regularly to clear it all out than you will the pumpkin farm, or alternatively, you should just put in some more storage. A great way to do that is to grab some additional hoppers and build a kind of staggered storage system underneath the melon farm's output chest. So you will end up with a kind of staircase of hoppers, ow, <laughs> a staircase of hoppers that leads down to a collection chest. Now we'll start off by cutting down here and just doing one for the time being. But it's also worth noting you'll need access to this at some point and that you won't be able to open a chest if it's underneath a log like this. So I think we might need to adjust the design a little bit here, maybe just add in a stair block there instead of a uh, instead of a log or something like that. But if we put the chest offset to one side like this, for example, let's close that up 
and then we put a hopper underneath here so it's underneath one section of the chest facing into this chest here all of the contents from this chest will be diverted down into this one and you can do the same thing here place a double chest on these two blocks and put a hopper at the end here to face into that and you can create storage that travels down you know as many blocks as you want to essentially until you hit bedrock and that will give you a lot more storage for something like this that's going to be running constantly in the background always producing items for you but that's pretty much it as far as melon and pumpkin farms go this is a pretty decent design now we do need to <laughs> as we did with the cactus farm actually make sure that we have a stair block or something above this chest to make sure that when the melons and pumpkins break they're not just going to run completely over the hoppers thanks to how fast those water streams work so let me quickly grab some materials that i can use to make a set of stairs here or you know what we could even do it with trap doors like this because that will stop the items from going over the hoppers they'll collide with the trap doors and not go any further but then this chest can still open if you've got that on top and in fact we might actually put a trap door here and that will serve as our access to the chest below. So that can just go level with the ground like that. You could even make this a spruce trapdoor and work that into the design of your your farm if you wanted to. But that will give us easy access to the chest below and that'll mean we can collect our melon slices anytime. The pumpkin farm is a little bit less active right now so we don't need to worry too much about that but yeah we'll do a bit of decorating of these I think maybe in the next episode or off camera though because right now I think that's probably been it for this episode we've managed to make some pretty decent melon and pumpkin farms these are going to last us more or less the entirety of our world if we want them to although if we want a ton of melons for trading we can always continue these designs even further upwards they are kind of modular as you can see you can just build them in rows like this and they will all keep growing so that's going to be it for this episode of the minecraft survival guide thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed it if you did please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see future videos thanks for watching i'll see you guys soon bye for now